Many generations after the days of Noah, one man found favor in the sight of the Lord God. His name was Abram, the son of Terah, and he was a tenth generation descendant of Noah through Noah's son Shem. Abram married his half-sister Sarai, and after years of dwelling in the land of Haran, close to Canaan, the Lord said unto Abram one day, Get out of your country, and from your kindred, and from your father's house, unto the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great. I will bless those that bless you, and curse those that curse you. And in your name shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so Abram went out of Haran, as the Lord had told him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. He took with him his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot, and all that they had gathered, as well as the people and livestock that they had gotten in Haran. They journeyed to the Canaanite city of Shechem and rested under a great oak called the Terebinth of Moreh. There, Abram built an altar unto the Lord, and the Lord appeared to him and said, Unto your seed will I give this land. But there was a great famine in Canaan which ravaged even the far ends of the land. In search of a conducive place, Abram journeyed from Shechem to Bethel and to Ai. All to no use, there was no abundance anywhere, there was only lack from the famine and drought. So Abram decided to temporarily leave the land of Canaan and go into the land of Egypt in search of food and water for his family. Before setting out, he built tents between Bethel and Ai to have a shelter to return to after his journey to Egypt. They were going into a foreign land, one full of plenty but heavily guarded by its inhabitants. Abram knew there would be a problem, and so he said to his wife Sarai, Behold now, I know that you are a beautiful woman to look upon, and it will happen that when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me but I know they will keep you alive. So I pray you, say to them that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that my soul may live because of you. And as suspected, when Abram came into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld Sarai and saw that she was beautiful and brought her before the Pharaoh of Egypt himself, who gave her a place in his royal palace. Of course, Sarai had said that Abram was her brother to keep her family safe, and so the Pharaoh treated Abram well for her sake. Pharaoh gifted him with sheep and oxen, men servants and maidservants, donkeys and camels. But because Pharaoh had coveted Sarai, Abram's wife, the Lord God brought down great plagues upon the Pharaoh and his household. With the help of his physicians, Pharaoh ascertained the cause of the plagues, and called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say that she is your sister? So I took her to be my wife. Now there, behold your wife, take her and go away. Pharaoh sent his men to escort Abram and his entire family out of Egypt, but he was kind enough not to take away all that he had gifted them, and neither did he harm a hair on their heads. And because of that kind gesture, Abram and his family went out of Egypt, sound and rich in cattle, silver and gold. They went back to Canaan, back to their tents between the cities of Bethel and Ai. And there they raised an altar and gave thanks to God. 